We are waiting, Jesus. Jesus, we are waiting because we know who you are, the creator of the world, the God who took on human form, the son of Mary. We are waiting, Jesus. Jesus, we are waiting because we have faith in you. We know that we can trust you. We remember that you are good to us. And we thank you for all the good things that you give to us every day. We are waiting, Jesus. Amen. Jesus, we are waiting here, here in Pembroke Pines, Davie, in Miramar, in Cooper City, in Miami, Miami Beach, Miami Gardens, and in North Miami, in Plantation, Coral Springs, Dania Beach, and in Hollywood, in Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, in Royal Palm Beach and Boynton Beach, in Sunrise and Tamarack, in Deerfield Beach, in Southwest Ranches, in Plantation, in Oakland Park and in Homestead, waiting for you to come into our houses, our streets, our shops and offices, to fill them with your light and with your peace. We are waiting, Jesus. Amen. Jesus, we are waiting for you to come and change things, to change us, to turn us from our way to your way so that we can be your humble servants, broken, made whole, wounded, but healed. Your workers against misogyny, racism, homophobia, and transphobia. Welcoming the immigrant, especially embracing those on the margins, listening to their stories, honoring their voices. In this world that needs you so much, we are waiting, Jesus. Amen. 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 Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. In your Son, Emmanuel, you have shown us your light and saved us from the power of sin. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. In the celebration of his birth, his spirit might dwell in the moon in our midst, for he is our light now salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. From the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Grace and peace be with you all. And you. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins. Keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Praise God, to whom we belonged since the creation of the world. When the water was created, we have heard God's voice ordering chaos with the world of life, word of life, illuminating the darkness of an eternal night that, <clears throat> that saw light for the first time. We, we come to thank God for being the water that purifies us and seals us in the eternal covenant and to give all the glory to our Creator, who has always sustained us even now. God is our light. May the whole creation adore God and cry, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from you. Bless Terry, who will read to us the scriptures. Make us hunger for the word of life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah happened. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to have a child in her womb from the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was just a man, and unwilling to shame her, he wanted to divorce her secretly. But when he deliberated this, suddenly an angel of the Most High God appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for in her is conceived a child from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this happened to fulfill what had been spoken by the Most High God through the prophet. Look now, the virgin shall conceive a child in her womb and give birth to a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which translated means God is with us. When Joseph got up from sleep, he did as the angel of the Most High God commanded him. He took her as his wife, yet did not know her sexually until the birthing of a son, and named him Jesus. Thank you. 
rejoices in God, my Savior, for He has loved with favor on the lowliest of His servants. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For He has looked with favor on the lowly. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. of doing the reflection this morning. So thank you. A little frantic coming from two hockey games up in Coral Springs. So we're here and now we can reflect. <clears throat> I was 32 weeks pregnant in this very church when my amniotic fluid began to leak. Being my first pregnancy and having only seen water breaking episodes on TV, I had no idea that this meant that I needed to go to the hospital immediately and that my unborn baby was in grave danger. I finished out the choir singing of the beloved Hallelujah Chorus and drove myself the 30 minutes home. When I arrived there, Jeff was painting the nursery 
And I remember thinking how for once we hadn't procrastinated a home project and that the nursery would be complete by the time the baby arrived eight weeks later. I was exhausted, so I laid down for a nap. When I woke up, my fluid was leaking a little more and I thought, mm, I should probably call my doctor to discuss the situation. I left a message with the answering service. It was Easter Sunday, so of course no one was working. I sat back down to continue my rest. When my doctor called and I explained the situation, she became alarmed and told me that I should have gone to the hospital immediately and that I needed to get there as soon as possible. Jeff quickly cleaned up the painting supplies while I frantically packed an overnight bag for the hospital. I just remember thinking, this cannot be happening. This is not the way that this was supposed to be. This was not part of my birthing plan. How can I be heading to the hospital when I should have another eight weeks to be ready for our baby to come home? The nursery isn't ready, I'm not ready, the baby isn't ready, I don't have everything bought, my mom isn't here from Ohio yet, why is this happening? Panicked, we drove to the hospital, checked in at emergency, and they whisked me upstairs to the maternity area. They told me that they would start me on hormones to try to strengthen the baby and keep it in me as long as possible. I envisioned being in the hospital for several weeks while our, ba while our baby continued to grow and develop, and that each day would get me closer to the due date. I sent Jeff home to finish painting. I was hooked up to machines to monitor the fetus. Not long after that, bells and whistles started going off. An entire team of nurses came rushing into my room, concern on their faces, moving me every which way to try to get our baby to breathe, which apparently he wasn't doing at the moment. This continued on and off throughout the night into the next day. Each time the same thing occurred. I was so scared. Sometime on Monday, my doctor came in to tell me that she was very concerned that the fetus was in distress and that the umbilical cord kept getting wrapped around his neck and that that's why he stopped breathing. Each episode was longer than the last. She would need to do an emergency C-section to remove the baby now. I called Jeff and told him to get there now because we were about to have a baby. At 4.29 p.m., Maddox was delivered. I got to hold him for just a brief moment and then he was taken away to the NICU where he would stay for the next 45 days. In our scripture for today, Joseph finds out that Mary is pregnant. They are betrothed to be married, but have not yet consecrated their marriage. History tells us that Mary and Joseph were probably teenagers, and the punishment for adultery is a possible stoning. How can this be? He must have thought, what have I gotten myself into? Joseph decides that instead of shaming her, that he will just divorce her secretly. But in a dream, Joseph is told to take Mary as his wife, that the child she is carrying is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, they should call him Jesus, and oh, by the way, he will save his people from their sin. Oh, okay, wait, what? <laughs> he is told to trust in the Lord, that everything will be okay. He gets up from his dream and does what he is commanded to do. Scripture leaves out the rest. The whole part about what Joseph and Mary must have been thinking during the entire pregnancy. Can you just imagine the conversations that they must have had? Just what they must have been thinking? They must have thought that this was not part of their plan. This was not at all what they had thought their young lives would be like. The only two Christmas songs that I can think of that really focus on what Mary must have been thinking are Mary Did You Know and Breath of Heaven. And those songs have always really spoken to me. After all, Mary is the one that carried Jesus for nine months at, under very unusual circumstances. But as if that wasn't enough, Mary is then told that she must go on a very long journey while very pregnant. She must have looked forward to a good night's sleep in a bed inside an inn upon their arrival. But once again, God had other plans. Their baby, Baby Jesus, Emmanuel, our Savior, was born not in a comfortable inn, but in a manger, in a stable, alongside ox and donkeys. 
not exactly the way you would imagine a king being born into the world. This is a story of a miracle baby born in a most unusual way. Childbirth itself is a miracle. I think we can all agree with that. But this birth, this was the miracle of miracles. It's such a beautiful story that we retell each year, and every year we feel the magic of this miracle. Every year we light candles and sing Silent Night, and every year since I can remember, it brings a tear to my eye. But what about the little miracles that are around us every day? Do we recognize them as miracles or just brush them aside and go on with our busy lives? We take things for granted, don't we? We take for granted that we'll wake up each morning and that our bodies will work the way that we expect them to. We have certainly realized throughout the last almost two years that we can't always depend on the usual, that we can't take simple things for granted. I hope that as a new year begins and this pandemic continues to wreak havoc on our lives, that we can see and appreciate the small miracles all around us. I even take Maddox's birth for granted, and I really shouldn't. I was there. I saw the worry on the nurses' faces. I saw the concern on my doctor's face. The umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck and he stopped breathing multiple times. And even in the NICU, he would stop breathing sometimes when he ate and start to turn blue. And we would have to pat him hard on the back to remind him to breathe. I imagine that if he had been born during Jesus's time, that he would not have made it. His birth and life is a miracle. And because we are very competitive in my household, I have to also say that my son Layton's life is also a miracle. <laughs> we have modern miracles all around us. They're not always big, obvious miracles, but small, subtle miracles that we often overlook and take for granted. So while we're busy baking, wrapping, decorating, entertaining, driving from store to store to find the perfect gift, stressing during this time of the year, let us pause and reflect on this scripture, the story of the Christ child and the miracle of his birth. Then take a moment and really see the small miracles all around us so that we can truly appreciate them and give thanks for them. I think through that we can become closer in our walk with God. I was pleasantly surprised in my research for this reflection to come across a story about a connection between this scripture and someone I really admire, Bono, who is the lead singer of my favorite band, U2. On DashHouse.com, I read, after returning home from a long tour, Bono, the lead singer for U2, returned to Dublin and attended a Christmas Eve service. At some point in that service, Bono grasped the truth at the heart of the Christmas story. In Jesus, God became a human being. With tears streaming down his face, Bono realized the idea that God is there if there is a force of love and logic in the universe, that it would seek to explain itself is amazing enough. That it would seek to explain itself by becoming a child born in poverty and straw, a child. I just thought, wow. Just the poetry, I saw the genius of picking a particular point in time and deciding to turn on this. Love needs to find a form. Intimacy needs to be whispered. Love has to become an action or something concrete. It would have to happen. There must be an incarnation. Love must be made flesh. Let us remember that Jesus is the unexpected miracle of Christmas. What is your unexpected miracle? Amen. Together. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Pray for Vince and Ronnie and Leanne, for Bev and Diane and Denise, for Mindy, all homeless, Pastor Keith, Pearl, Lynette, Diana, and Nana. We pray for Bev, Zeta and family, Sam, Prim, for Bob, our Trinity family, Lisa Gomez, and peace of the world. We pray for Olga Lopez. We pray for Jeremiah, thank you, um, about to uh, adopt his baby. Um, for Carol Hunter, and um, we pray for traveling mercies for Ashley, Kimora, and Brittany, for Pam, John, Jawan, Maya, and everyone I've missed. Father God, we would like to um, keep everyone in prayer. Father, we would like for you to continue to build a fence around them and their families and keep them safe and healthy. Father, give them perfect peace. <clears throat> we pray for strength and healing for all who are ill. We continue to pray for Lisa Gomez, Terry, Karen, and their families. Deanna, Gratine and Butch. We continue to pray for healing and strength for Sam, Bill, Miss Beverly, and anyone else I may have missed. Father, we continue to pray for and ask for you to keep watch over Robert, Pam, 
Mark, John, and Juwan, Maya and Olivia, Miss Marjorie, the Gibbons family, the Hills and Grant, the Stewart, the Salisbury family, the Smith, Stewart, the Strata, and the Whites family. We ask for healing for Jeff and James. Continue to pray for the Blackston family, the Payne, the Hill, the Cooper, and the Smith family. Everyone and anyone who was contracted COVID-19 and, and also who are dealing with this virus and the other virus that has now become a concern. Father, we pray for our Trinity Lutheran family, members and friends. We pray for their neighbors. We pray for Claire, Nicole, and Matt, the Prescott family, for anyone celebrating a birthday in December, especially our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everyone who is looking for employment, those who don't have a church home, or someone to pray for them, everyone and anyone dealing with financial problems, please give it to God. We want to continue to pray for all God's animals, small and large, and also for all God's children. Father, we pray for Surfside, for Cuba, Haiti, the people who are hit by the recent tornadoes and any other weather condition that has came upon the United States. Father, we keep that in prayer. We pray for the homeless, anyone who doesn't have a place to call home, anyone who doesn't have food to eat. We pray for Tel Aviv, Israel, Gaza, healing and strength for anyone that I miss. And I would like to continue to keep everyone in prayer. Amen. Lord God, we pray for Sharon Flynn and family, for Anne Fine, Diane Constantino and family, for Zori and family, Bernadette, Betty, Sally, and Skeeter, for Christine, Vicki, and Tim. Lord, we pray for Barbara and Vera, for Terry on her upcoming surgery, Lord. Lord, we pray for the Jabu family and for Ronnie, who had a, a massive stroke. Lord, we pray for all who we speak now in our hearts and on our lips. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We say we have no sin. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin 
and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we come to this last Sunday in the season of Advent and prepare our hearts for the coming birth of Jesus, is there anyone that would like to bring before we share in the fellowship of the altar uh, any stories of gratitude, anything that you are grateful for from the past week? What has the Lord shown you or done for you in your life? I'd like to uh, uh, offer gratitude for our son and for his brother recovery from surgery to remove a cancerous thyroid gland. And uh, he seems to be doing well. We're very grateful for that. Anyone else like to pray? Praise the Lord, amen. My name is Raymond. Lopez, and I'm from Clearwater, visiting from St. Paul Luther's Church over there. And as soon as I moved down to Florida, I was in a car accident on October 23rd. I had to take the car. And I am grateful that the Lord has healed me and got me here safe and sound. For this, I'm grateful for him. Amen. 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 to find a test on Saturday? No way. I, and I thought I was lucky because, you know, I, I was driving by and it was like a test and I was like, oh, okay, let me go. And, you know, I did it. It was quick. I was like, all right, this is like a no-brainer. They didn't put my information in right, so I couldn't get, it, get any of my results. <laughs> PK was great, gracious enough to give me a, a home test. I went there, you know, went to the website. I logged it in and it said, recalled. <laughs> Got up this morning and I said, okay, I'm gonna to go to Walmart, uh, Walgreens, which is next door, and I'm gonna go get a test. I go there and I'm like, oh, we don't have any. Four stores later, <laughs> she bought them all. Anyway, um, thank you very much. 
You said find find a reason, right? The reason for me right now is because I be, be, I had become complacent, you know. I didn't wear the mask all the time, you know. I walk into like public and I'm like, oh, well, the mask, everybody's wearing a mask but me, but eh, you know, I'm, I'm um, vaccinated, and that's not the way it works. It's not the way it works, you know. And that is what God is reminding me, you know. Um, I do have to. Um, do some more prayers from the prayer list because that's what I was looking for up there. Because usually I do it in the morning, and I couldn't find it, so I, you know, I would be remiss if I <clears throat> left off one of the um, the lists. So um, we prayed for Sylvia and her mom, and Nancy faces another biopsy. Melissa and Beverly, one of their families, Deborah Stewart, Beverly for Julian and Katie, Renee, Mark, Justin. Pam and Nick, Sam and Dan, Patty, Shannon, more so the Claire and their families. Kelly and John and their families, John H. going through medical issues, Neil, Sandra T. And blessings for all who are undergoing medical issues and treatments and safe travels for all who are traveling. And honestly, gratitude for all that God has given us. Amen. 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 And so the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You comforted your people with the promise of a Redeemer through whom you would also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. <laughs> and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you for the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. For on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it for all to eat, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Together, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Amen. 
Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light and bring the gift of peace on earth. Amen. All praise and honor and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. those who desire to commune at the altar rail to come forward. We ask that you don't form a line along the aisle, but just come up from your pew as spaces open up. If you prefer that we come and commune you in your pew at the completion of communing around the altar rail, we'll walk down the center aisle and just give us a wave and we'll come and commune you in your pew. We have both regular bread and gluten-free wafers. If your preference is for gluten-free, just let us know as we commune you and we'll make sure that you get uh, what you prefer. The trays have red wine and white grape juice. Just as we come around, I place bread in your open hands, go ahead and eat. When the tray comes, then choose either the red wine or the white grape juice. And after if you've drank, you'll find spaces along the altar rail to leave the cup as you depart back to your pew. If you're communing in the pews, leave your cup there and we'll, we'll pick it up at the end of the service. Uh, here at Trinity, we practice something that we call what? Radical hospitality. Radical hospitality. Who's welcome to the table of the Lord? Everyone. Everyone's welcome to the table of the Lord. For real. For real. <laughs> all means all. Come my friends, let us then begin as we commune.
As those who are able to please rise. God, we come to you in our waiting. We wait with our fears, our anxieties, and our frustrations. We wait with our pain and regrets, our shame and confusion. We wait with impatience. We rush around preparing for the festivities, not leaving space to prepare our hearts. We wait in excitement. We are ready to celebrate. We know the story and its humbleness and simplicity and wonder. We wait in thanksgiving. We are free and able to celebrate. We have others around us to share in this journey. We are able to wonder in the marvel of your gift. Amen. A couple of brief announcements. Following service today, if you would like, over in the fellowship hall next door, uh, we have uh, our gingerbread and gingerbread houses and, and items for decorating them. If you'd like to stick around and decorate some gingerbread to take home with you, or if you'd like to just pick up some gingerbread and, and take them and decorate them at home, you're welcome to either way. We have uh, pizza, if you would like uh, to have something for lunch to share as well. That we have tables that are separated, distance and all that stuff. So you can either come and stay with us in the hall and eat and decorate. You can pick up and decorate at home. We got all that going on. Uh, so Friday is Christmas Eve. <laughs> And we have one service Christmas Eve this year, and that's at 5.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m., one service. There, uh, if you need a reminder where you picked up your bulletin, there are little slips of paper, and that's exactly what it says on there. And you can put it right on your refrigerator. It also lets you know that next Sunday, we are virtual only. So next Sunday, the 20... Yeah. Six. We will not be here. If you come here, you'll see a sign on the door that's there now that says virtual only, December 26th. So that's also on that little slip of paper where you got your bulletin, if you wanna pick that up and put it on your fridge so you don't forget. Because one of you will forget, and then I'm gonna feel bad. And I don't wanna feel bad. So, Christmas Eve, what time? 5.30. Where? Here. 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 We're also going to be live streaming. So if you would, and that live stream will start at 5.30 and it'll be for the service and then will be available on our Facebook and our YouTube channel forever. <laughs> or until those things get replaced by something else. Uh, next Sunday, virtual only at 11 a.m., just like normal, but instead of being here, it'll stream again on our YouTube and Facebook, okay? And then January 2nd, we're back regular schedule, 11 a.m., in person, and streaming, just as we are today, except I won't be wearing blue, because it won't be Advent anymore. All right, we good? Good. Cool. If you're traveling for uh, Christmas, you know, Prayers for safe travel. Enjoy the company of those who you will be with. Uh, if you'll be with us Christmas Eve, we look forward to that as well. So I just posted a Zoom link if, there, if people want that are uh, watching us can uh, be part of the gingerbread um, festivities. Okay, so if you are virtual, uh, we are going to Zoom the decorating of gingerbread men. So if you're with us virtually right now, everyone wave at the camera. Hello, virtual Trinity people. <laughs> Lisa just posted the Zoom link for people to Zoom gingerbread. What a brave new world we live in today. All right. Pastor, I have one thing. Before we conclude the service with the King Shafam, we've been listening to it at the end of each service throughout Advent. I want to give credit to our own Jim Hawkins
guys.